Okay guys, so Jim, looks like we found the dive site. Tell us what we're looking for once we're down there. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down there and we're gonna look at the uh, lime rock boulders that we put down. This is a little bit different reef, uh, but we're gonna look and I want you to notice the lime rock boulders, you won't even be able to see them. You'll see a bunch of growth on top of them, a bunch of benthos, and that's what happens to these reefs after a year or two. Uh, they're totally natural and undistinguishable from anything that you saw out at Harker Point Park. So basically, you look at a pretty coral reef. Yes. We can do that, right, guys? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what materials did you use on this reef? All right. These materials were lime rock boulders. Typically, what they do is they, they mine the lime rock from rock pits, and they use the mine for fill pads for houses and things. Some of the materials are different sizes, and they can't use those for fill, so they use them for other various environmental projects. All right, well, let's suit up and see what we find. Fantastic. Let's get in. Though the visibility wasn't great, it didn't stop us from enjoying the beautiful reef. Nestled in only about 15 feet of water, brilliantly colored corals and sponges draped across the ocean bottom. Little eyes peeped out of the nooks and crannies of the reef as bigger fish stopped here and there to take a nibble. It's amazing to be around ecosystems like this one because you really start to see how intricate they are. From the producers to the predators, a reef is like a big city, with critters busily shuffling through their daily tasks and coexisting. In fact, if you listen closely, you can even hear the popping noises made by the shrimp on the reef. This is what the natural world should look like, a place where strong babies are able to reach adulthood and where people step in to provide habitat instead of destroying it. In fact, here it's incredibly hard to tell that there are any man-made structures. Nature has taken over, corals have built up, and life has moved in. And with the dire situations our planet continues to face, it was exhilarating to be a part of a project like this. And I couldn't help but feel refreshed and hopeful that with every breath I breathed in through my scuba regulator, in the end, the passion of dedicated people would be the key to ensuring that my grandchildren will be able to witness places like this. Okay. How was it, Kara? Oh, it was so cool. Lots of sea urchins and stuff. Hi. Lots of fish. Hi. Wow, Jim, that was an amazing dive. We saw so much fish, so much coral. You saw a cucumber like that big. <laughs> so, I mean, we saw pork fish, we saw snappers. What else is there to see? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of stuff down there, and a lot of stuff you, you can't see just on one dive. Uh, but all of this benthos and benthic invertebrates, they support the fish life, which is real important for our, our offshore artificial reefs and deeper water, and even for our uh, fish in the Indian River Lagoon. So we need, need, need to preserve these reefs in yes. order for our ecosystem to be balanced. Absolutely. So how can folks at home go about preserving reefs, especially kids that might live inland and not even be around yeah. oceans? Well, it's amazing, but everything you do eventually makes its way into the ocean or, or water bodies. Totally agree. Uh, so you have to really reduce the amount of waste that you uh, produce, and also, you know, if you're out here in a, bo a boat, uh, try not to anchor on top of uh, corals and make sure that you pull your anchors and you don't know, destroy too many, too many water bottles. Great. Great. Jim, thank, thank you so much. Great information. Thank you James, so much. James, Molly, thank you very much for coming, and, and we really appreciate having you.